20 years ago to the day we saw the release of School of Rock, a movie which became the highest grossing musical comedy of all time until 2015. It led to a stage musical and a TV show remake and of course it absolutely propelled Jack Black into a household name, leading him to other highlights in his career such as Kung Fu Panda, Bowser and of course Jablinski Games. But 20 years later, does School of Rock still hold up? Let's talk about it. Hello and welcome to Cinemates and if you're new here please subscribe for more videos like this. 20 years later I think School of Rock is still a fantastic film. I think it's one of the examples of an almost perfect movie. Now a perfect film doesn't mean that it's my favourite film of all time but it means they made the perfect version of the movie that they set out to make. Based on the initial idea and premise for this film this is the best version of the movie possible. It feels like the absolute vision of the creative team brought to life. It's one of those movies that perfectly found its lead actor. While the idea is good and the premise is solid, finding an actor that absolutely encompasses this film really elevates the material. Much like Robert Downey Jr in the first Iron Man, without Downey that would still be a good film but with him it reaches another level. An actor who absolutely feels like they understand everything about the script and their character. And that's what Jack Black feels like here. He feels like he completely gets this character. Not only injecting his own energy, comedy and musical prowess into the character but also understanding what makes this character work down to the core. It's not just the usual Jack Black shtick, it's not just random and funny for the sake of it, there is passion and relatability and vulnerability here. Because much like Tony Stark, when we first meet this character, he is not a nice guy. He's a slacker, he's lazy, he doesn't pay his rent, and he puts his friend's career on the line for his own selfish reasons. However, what Black brings to the role is a level of heart, an air of relatability, and of course he oozes fun, energy and charisma. And all these things that Black brings to the role stops the character from feeling like an awful person, and instead makes him someone that you want to root for, despite making some questionable choices because on paper what his character does is really bad. He sneaks into a school, he impersonates a teacher and then he brings them outside of the school in the back of his van. He should be arrested but he never feels that way because of Black's performance because everything he does here feels like it comes from a place of passion for music and the connection and bond that he develops with the students it doesn't ever feel weird or creepy. Often when we rewatch movies from over 20 years ago the basic premises and ideas haven't aged well but this is not the case for School of Rock. I could see it going that way but fortunately it doesn't and I think that's largely down to Jack Black's performance. Alongside the great performance is also a great arc for his character. Starting off acting as a teacher for the paycheck then learning about the students musical skills he wants to use them for more financial gain and revenge on his old band. Even as he starts to bond and care about his students he's still in this for personal reasons wanting to be the leading man and to play his own song. It's not till everything goes wrong and he quits that he realizes the students are still supportive of him. He begins to then change and offers to play a student song and even offering the chance for someone else to sing it. And even when he's learned all of this he still feels sad when they don't win Battle of the Bands, forgetting the lesson that he taught his students. That is not about winning but about rocking. The best example of this is when he learns one of his students has written their own song and he decides that the band should practice it for fun. He clearly loves the music, you feel his passion and he's clearly proud of the student in this scene. They're having fun and riffing off each other but at this stage he still wants to play his song for the Battle of the Bands. He's still doing this for personal reasons and despite some character growth and connecting with his students he still wants to play his song because his arc is not yet complete. And overall it leads to a really effective arc for his character because it's a series of small changes that we see across the film. It's not one big moment that he suddenly changes from a jerk to a nice guy, it happens slowly over little moments. We as the audience see him changing, probably before the character even realises it himself and that helps us to stay on his side. We see him change from a slacker to someone passionate about his work. We see him change from someone who does not care about the children to teaching them and supporting them with their concerns. We see see the slow change from selfish to selfless and it just works. Not only does the main character have an arc here but we see how our lead character helps the other characters and this leads to them having arcs themselves. Whether that's the head teacher learning to loosen up, his roommate not restricting his dreams or the children overcoming their issues and insecurities. Like I really like the scene where we find out one of the students is having issues at home with his overbearing father. Jack Black's character sees this and is obviously concerned with this. Usually you'd expect a teacher to pull you to the side and ask you is everything okay at home but instead we see Jack Black's character deal with this in his own unique way. Using it as an opportunity 
opportunity to engage the students, teach them a lesson about rock, but at the same time address the personal issues of a student directly without having to single him out. And the children here even help him back in return. When he first plays his song to the class, he's very awkward and nervous, which is a trait we hadn't really seen from this character before. And we realize his insecurities too. And of course, when he's quit and ready to give up, the students motivate him to do it for the music as he'd been teaching them all along. And a lot of the children's insecurities are actually the same as his own. He doesn't feel cool enough and lacks confidence at times like Lawrence. He himself says he struggles with his weight like Tamika. And when a student says, you mean we're not in a band? You can tell that he connects with that because he's already lost his place in his old band. And so he doesn't want anyone else to experience this and ensures that everyone gets a role in the band. And these arcs still work 20 years later, making this movie feel timeless because these ideas are always relevant. Outside of the arcs, the film tells us to stick it to the man. I didn't do it for the grades. So really the main theme here is following your passion. And again, I think this is a theme that is always relevant and it doesn't make the movie feel dated. If anything, it feels more relevant than ever. In the case of this film, it's of course told through the lens of music, but the message can be applied to anything, music, art, film, or anything outside of traditional academic subjects. And I'm sure children with interests outside of the traditional would really enjoy seeing this message told today. As a child, I was more like the children at the start of this movie. Not that I went to an expensive prep school, not by any means, but I did follow a very traditional academic route. And I didn't see the point in following anything outside of that. I was fully immersed and believed in the school system. So it's actually now, as I'm a bit older and as someone who discovered their passion for film later in life, that I can really connect with this message more. And so I think this film works for both adults and children. I think it's a really important message here because it's never too late to find your passion and follow it. Because without that idea, I wouldn't be doing this. Now, of course, this is a music orientated film. So let's talk about the songs. The songs used throughout this film are very famous, very classic rock songs. There's not a massive amount of deep cuts here. And so I can imagine it's a nice introduction for younger people getting into rock, like the students in this film. It's funny seeing how a lot of these songs have now appeared in Marvel films, notably the Immigrant Song, whose artist Led Zeppelin usually don't allow people to use their songs in films. However, they were persuaded when Jack Black sent a video on stage during production asking to use the song. And Led Zeppelin liked this so much that they actually allowed him to use the song. This contrasts Marvel, who I can only imagine just threw so much money at Zeppelin to allow its use in Ragnarok. And the movie is centered around the battle of the bands, and so its big third act finale is an original song. And it's pretty great. It feels influenced by the music shared with the children throughout the film. It relates to the arcs and themes of the film, and it just fits so perfectly. And so it's crazy to me when I found out that this song wasn't written until the last minute, with filming for this movie taking place without the final song developed. We were already making the movie at that point. We didn't have the ending song. The song is just so critical to the film working that the fact that they didn't have a final song during filming is insane. Luckily it all came together and the song really worked. Again this reminds me of Iron Man 1 where the script wasn't complete and they were writing it while filming and yet it all came together in the end. In terms of directing, I could imagine a version of this with a generic studio feeling director, but there's actually some interesting stuff in here. The opening and closing credits are nice one takes with a bit of style. When music is being performed and characters are practicing, it's often done without cut, which helps it to feel real and that music is actually being made. And when the battle of bands is directed at the end, it does feel like watching a recording of a live show. I think the child actors here are directed to play up to their strengths. They were chosen for their musical abilities, not their acting abilities. And so while they aren't the best child actors ever, their characters have personality that worked for their acting limitations. For example, with some of the more awkward feeling actors playing more awkward or stiff characters. And the children were actually musicians and it's good that they made that a priority. Like I said, this is an almost perfect movie. Everything comes together to bring the vision to life here, from the tone to the actors, to the direction, to the themes. If I had to criticize it, I don't think the passage of time is particularly clear here. I think the film takes place over about three weeks, but with Jack Black's character going through a lot of growth, with montages showing different school days and the children developing their rock skills, it feels like many months might have passed. The implication is that Jack Black's character has turned his life around and is now able to pay rent and stay with his roommate because he almost gets kicked out at the start of the film. But the central conflict revolves around receiving a paycheck, which implies that he hasn't been paid yet and so it can only be a matter of weeks. It's not a massive issue but I don't think the film is very clear about how much time passed and it feels like more time passed than it actually did. But the passing of time and a few words being used which we wouldn't use today are the only real criticisms I have for this film. When reviewing movies on this channel I don't give grades anymore but it would get
Overall, School of Rock is still a fantastic film 20 years later. It feels like the perfect storm of actor, script and themes which really brings the film to life and makes it feel timeless and relevant. On the surface, it's a funny comedy with great music and a charismatic lead actor, but at its core it's a movie with heart, with powerful arcs and important themes about embracing your true self, and it absolutely still holds up 20 years later. I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know your thoughts on this film and the video in the comments below. This is a very different genre video than I usually make. It probably won't perform as well as some of the other videos on my channel, but I had fun making it and I hope you guys did too. If you did, please give it a like. It helps my channel out so much. And if you're new around here, be sure to subscribe for more videos like this on past films, on Marvel, DC, Star Wars, or anything else amazing going on in cinema right now. But for now, thanks for watching Cinemaze.